Hey everyone, my name is James and welcome back to Chippy Gaming. So today we're starting up a brand new mini series where we see if it's possible to take on and defeat Master Mo Terraria using only the new and improved summoner class that was built upon in Terraria 1.4. So just like my classic Terraria videos, I'm going to run you through all of the footage that I have recorded. And I'm going to give you guys a lot of tips, actually. I learned a lot doing this, and I think I've got some good information to share about playing as a summoner. But stick around, guys, because during the video, I'm going to tell you the story of how a cat, not even my cat, managed to delete 20 hours worth of work on this video. But let's begin. So, like every good Terraria adventure, it all began by creating a brand new medium world and chopping down trees. Now, if you want to play as a summoner in Terraria 1.4, you have two options. You either get really lucky and you find a slime staff, which is probably never going to happen, or you manage to find the new finch staff that was added in Terraria 1.4. So the very first thing that I did was I headed all the way right, and this meant going past the dungeon, actually. I almost stopped at the dungeon, but then I remembered you can get these new giant trees past the dungeon, and then, just like that, I managed to find myself a Finch Staff. So, this is a really interesting starting weapon, because if you get it in the right situation, it's not too bad. But if you get it in the wrong one, it's garbage. But you know, that's what it is. When you're starting off as a summoner, it's not meant to be easy. So, the first thing I did was, I decided to head down into a nearby cave. I really like exploring caves on the outer sides of the world. They just seem to have a lot more to them. But this cave was probably the best look I could have ever have had. Let me tell you, this one singular cave made the entire run. So I'm going to show you guys a bunch of clips here as I go through. And just remember, this was all one cave. So I was just going through and I was finding multiple heart crystals. Everywhere I went, I was finding accessories and just things to basically bulk up my character. So the goal here when you're exploring is really to get enough accessories so that you can head to the jungle. And that is pretty much what I did. I just kept going through my cave, finding heart crystal after heart crystal. And by the time I left, I was almost at full health. I also had an Agler, a step stool. I had a band of regen. It was great. So let me show you guys what it's like to use the Finch Staff. Here I am in a box, and as you can see, we have some icy slimes. These are the worst. And all I can do is sit inside my box and occasionally let the bird free. So basically, I just ended up running away because it doesn't really do anything. What I'm trying to get at is don't even bother using just the finch staff. Wait until you get yourself a whip. One of the very best things you can do, though, if you do get yourself in a good situation, is all you need to do is block off the enemy. If you can block off an enemy and you want to kill it, then you can spawn your finch on it and it will just repeatedly hit it until it dies. I tried to do that here, but unfortunately, I died to the skeleton and that was the first death of the series. Now, for me, the next priority was just setting up a base. I wanted an area where I could organize all of my chests. I wanted NPCs. Getting NPCs and such was not the most essential thing in the world, but it felt nice to have a nice little area. So like I said, the goal was to head to the jungle. So once my town was set up, I headed left and got straight into grinding through the jungle. So what we're trying to do here is we're trying to get ourselves one of the new whips. Now, you can wait for the zoologist to sell you a leather whip, but I'll tell you now, boys, you will find this whip a lot quicker than you ever will that leather whip. That leather whip takes forever to get. You need to fill up a good amount of the bestiary to get it. And look, it's just so much easier to just get into it like this. So the jungle whip, I think it's called the snap thorn, is a pretty easy crafting recipe. All you'll need is an anvil. You'll need 15 stingers, 3 spores, and 3 vines. Now here is how you kill enemies in the jungle. Instead of trying to put the enemy in a box, you put yourself in a box, spawn the finch staff on top of the enemy, and usually the knockback from the wings of the finch will actually keep that enemy in place. So all I did for about 20 minutes was just stand around, make sure I was guarded on either side, 
and I just got 15 stingers. I'm also using jungle torches here because I don't really know how the luck mechanic works. All I know is every single thing I killed during my little adventure here, I got a drop from. So I worked my way through uh, a bunch of man eaters as well. It's the same deal. You just hide in a hole, let your finch do the work. But then once I had all of my ingredients, I was out of there and I made myself the snap fawn. Now, once you have the snap fawn, you are now viable to mess things up. This whip is amazing. I absolutely love it. It's great. So one of the things I got in my adventure was a can of worms. Now, I'm going to need to do a lot of fishing later, but these three cans of worms were enough bait to basically keep me fishing for a good hour or two. Yeah, I love cans of worms. So now that we have a whip and we have our finch staff, the next goal is to try and do blood moon fishing. Now, before we do that, I'm going to show you guys a quick little tip. I really want to have a pylon at the ocean just so it's easier to teleport there. So I learned this recently. If you want a pylon in Terraria, but you can't be bothered to mess around with NPC happiness, all you need is a nurse and an arms dealer. So that's why I blew up this shadow orb so that I could get an arms dealer. But basically it works like this. If you have the arms dealer living with the nurse, the arms dealer will sell you the pylon no matter what biome he's in. He just likes the nurse that much. Guys, I think we can all relate to that. But this is one of the most broken systems in Terraria. I'll never, ever understand pylon happiness. So while setting up my ocean town, we did get a disturbing message that a goblin army is now approaching. Good thing we have our whip because we're going to be whipping for the next 30 minutes as we try and defeat master mode goblin army. I will say it's not as bad as you would think. It's pretty good actually. Like 30 minutes is, is not bad considering I have no armor or anything decent really other than my whip. So I whipped them into shape and they were gone. Now, later on, I will end up using the Goblin Tinkerer, but it's not really essential. So here's a funny little goof I found. If you have the NPCs in the wrong order, they don't want to sell you the pylon. So I had the nurse on top and the arms dealer on the bottom. Didn't sell it. I flipped them around so that the arms dealer was on top. And then bam, I now have an ocean pylon. So the next goal is blood moon fishing. So if you guys don't know, you can now sleep in a bed that speeds up time. So before I do that, I decided to make my new contraption, which is something that I came up with for farming out blood moon fishing. You guys are going to love this. It makes it so easy. So basically all I did is sleep, wait for blood moons, and I even crafted some sonar and fishing potions to make things a little bit easier. But let me show you how my little contraption works in the ocean. It's pretty great. So what you do is you wait for the right enemy. So we have a zombie merman. He pops up and you'll see he just jumps straight into that box. I spawn a finch staff on him and he can't move. And then I go down into the middle part and I whip the zombie merman. Now, let me tell you, I think some numbers might need to be tweaked around here a little bit because the drop rate of this vampire staff that we're going for is very, very low, all things considered. So for the wandering eyes, what you need to do is fish them up and then head immediately right, hang your character over this block a little bit and use your whip and the eye will just stay in place. So it makes it super convenient. But yeah, I ended up doing this for about an hour, maybe two hours. I can't really remember. It just took forever. That's all I can remember. And then as I killed my final zombie merman, I got myself the vampire frog staff. So once I head home, now that I've got my vampire staff, the first thing I need to do is work on armor. Now, this is something I've only started doing recently. But did you guys know you can get obsidian armor in Terraria? Because I didn't. I've never been making this, but it's actually pretty good. So all you need to make it is cobwebs. You turn that into silk and you use some bombs to grab some obsidian and it makes really good starter armor. So my first goal really was just mining down, finding lava, bringing water to that lava. And then I was able to basically craft myself a little bit of obsidian armor. But when I returned home, the Eye of Cthulhu was about to spawn. I have nothing prepared for this. I have no buffs. I don't really have a plan. I've got two pieces of obsidian armor 
It's not the best thing in the world, but I did what I would usually do, and I basically started working on a long platform. A long platform will always help you out with the Eye of Cthulhu. Now, I will say, if you guys don't have Hermes boots or equivalent, don't bother with this fight. Just skip it. Just log out. It's not worth doing. You'll need that speed for the final phase uh, because your whip will not do enough damage. So the Eye of Cthulhu was, uh, was pretty straightforward, really. I'm whipping. I'm letting my frog do a little bit of damage. I'm going to be real with you, boys. It's not as aggressive as I would like it to be. But we basically whipped it into the second phase. The second phase, once again, was not too bad. And I think that's just because I've fought the Eye of Cthulhu so many times in my life. But the third phase was all about perseverance, really. So what we were doing is we were using the track to build up our speed left. We'd flip back on ourselves and go right. And as long as you're running at max speed, the Eye of Cthulhu will not be able to dash into you. If you have that speed, the fight is pretty chill. Towards the end of the fight, though, it will get a little bit more frantic, a little bit more manic. And then it will start hitting you. But by that point, it's so low on health. Your whip is so large. You're going to take it down pretty easily. So like I do here, it's gone. It's defeated. And it wasn't really essential, but at least it's done. Today's video is once again proudly sponsored by Ridge Wallet. So if you guys don't know, Ridge is a manufacturer of the slim and genuinely very stylish wallets. For years, I was using this one right here. And I feel like most guys can agree. These wallets, they do the job. And then after a couple of months, you're like opening it up and you're like, why are you so massive? And you realize it's because you've probably filled it with a bunch of stuff that you don't really need. And it becomes like almost a paperweight. So that's why I'm glad I've got Ridge because Ridge makes these really nice premium metal wallets. that are very slim. They hold up to 12 cards. And if you do like cash, you can have a cash strap on the back. I know not many places are taking cash right now, but... I'm sure in the future they will again. So what I like about Ridge is that they're made of these really nice materials. The one I'm using here is the titanium gunmetal gray and it looks so good. That metal actually helps as well if you're out and about and somebody's got one of those scamming contactless machines. This actually blocks out those signals so it feels a little bit more secure. I like that about it. I also feel pretty secure knowing that a Ridge wallet comes with a lifetime guarantee. So if I buy one of these as a gift, I know that if it breaks down the line, I'm going to be able to help that person out. And they also have over 30,000 five-star reviews on their website. So if you want to order a Ridge wallet, go to www.ridge.com slash chippy or just use code chippy, save 10% off your order. They also have free worldwide shipping and returns. And I don't think you get any better than that. So thank you once again to Ridge for sponsoring yet another video here on the channel. But with that out of the way, let's get back to the summoner run. Oh, hey, welcome back to Terraria. You can go back to thinking that I look like an old man. So now that the Eye of Cthulhu has been defeated, the first thing we have to do is head to the jungle. Now, I'm heading to the jungle for two reasons, which I will explain. But before I do any of that, I have to set up a pylon because pylons are just too good. Especially if you want to hop around the world, take the time, get a pylon. That's my message of 1.4. So the first reason we're here is to find a queen bee biome. Now, I found this one really quickly. And even though it's a bit of an odd shape, we're going to come back later and make an arena. But before I do that, I'm about to do some fishing. So I wanted to set up an infinite water source. And one of the things I found, which a lot of you probably know about is that if you make pyramids underneath your infinite water source, uh, it actually duplicates the water a lot quicker. Now, the reason I'm creating this is to get myself some lardfish. Lardfish is a key ingredient in making summoner potions, and summoner potions help a lot. So, for those that don't know, a summoner potion will allow you to have one extra minion summoned. So you can imagine at this point, one extra minion is going to make the world of difference. Now, the reason we were making those summoner potions is because we do have the next boss that we need to face. So this boss is going to be the Eater of Worlds. So we head again to the Corruption. And for me, when it comes to the Eater of Worlds, what I personally like to do is just make an arena that's nice and flat. I'll block off any of the uh, gaps and I'll also use some bombs to maybe widen the arena out a little bit. And I'm even using a platform here just to help with my movement a little bit. Now, let me take a moment to say, 
A cat really did delete my footage. A lot of you thought I was joking around on the community post, but what happened was I recorded my summoner run. I did about 20 hours. I think it might have been 25. And as I was recording it, because I was doing it on a laptop, the neighbor's cat walked in because we had the, the back door open. It was a hot day. And the cat walked across the laptop and just ran over the delete button. Now, when it comes to big files like video recordings, they don't go to the recycling bin. Nah, they just get deleted. So I did have to restart this whole project from scratch because I lost the first five hours of footage and without it, the rest of it just didn't make any sense. So now that my cat talk is out the way, here's the Eater of Worlds. The Eater of Worlds as a summoner with two frogs is, uh, is pretty chill, I would say. I'm mainly relying on my whip and what I really like is that the whip has a nice long curve. So this will help you hit many segments at once. It also doesn't do enough damage to really split the Eater of Worlds so that it becomes a frantic mess. I really like how it just feels like you're doing a really balanced amount of damage because once you start splitting it up, yeah, it's it's not the best and, uh, and your chances of surviving definitely go down. So the reason we did that fight is to get myself a Nightmare Pickaxe. Now, in my original project, I actually didn't do this. So what I did was I used the frogs to kill the queen bee. And let me tell you, not worth it. It took forever. So we're down in hell. We're mining hellstone. We're picking up a hell forge, which now requires a nightmare pickaxe. You can't just, you know, pick it up by destroying the block underneath anymore. So that's a little change in, uh, in 1.4. So the reason we're mining hellstone is to get ourselves an imp staff. The imp staff is going to pay off big. Let me tell you, it basically melts the queen bee. Uh, compared to the frogs that don't really do anything, uh, just get this. It, it changes the run completely and it really speeds things up. So we're back at the queen bee biome and I'm just making an arena off to the side. I used to be the person that would try and change the original bee biome to suit my needs, but I really do find it better to just make something, you know, off to the left or off to the right. That way you can decide how big it's going to be, how many platforms it's going to have. And then you're away from the majority of the honey. So for the queen bee fight, we're basically relying on our movement. If the bee is charging at us, we have to jump above it or go below it. If it's moving around frantically, shooting stingers, we're just charging left and right to avoid them. But if it stands in place, we're getting the whip out. So not too much to say about this one. Just genuinely make the imp staff. Don't bother with the frog staff. It's just not worth it. Trust me. Go with this, you'll have a much better time. Because even the, the on-fire effect just makes the, the world a difference. So with that, the Queen Bee has been defeated. Now, I did go back and I did it a second time because we didn't get enough uh, crafting materials to make a full set of armor. But then, you know, I got my bee armor. And let me tell you, this feels very satisfying. There's only one set of summoner armor in pre-hard mode. So it's a really great feeling to get it. It's definitely very rewarding. So next up is Skeletron, but before I do that, one big thing for me is that I like to move around during Skeletron. I like to use my height to my advantage. So I would rather have a menacing cloud in a bottle. So I took a little bit of time to go to some floating islands just to get that accessory so that I know if I'm moving around and I do fall, I'm going to be fine. So here is Skeletron. Now in my original run, what I did here was I used the Imp Staff and the Ballista Staff, and it did speed things up a little bit, but this just worked out fine. So with Skeletron, you want to do what you'd normally do with any fight. You want to work on the hands and try and get them defeated at around about the same time, because what happens is once you've defeated one hand, the head will then send out skulls, and it makes the fight a little bit harder. But once you've reached that point where it's sending out those skulls, all you really need to do is circle the boss. This is something that took me years to kind of nail. But all you do is use your height, you fly up, you then go over the boss, either to the left or to the right. And if you can do that while also avoiding its spin attack, you're going to have a very good time. Like, it's completely feasible as a summoner in master mode. No real challenge required. So, something really cool here. This is actually the moment I got Chippy's Couch for the very first time. So, I've only had it through Chaos and I've also found it in Red Seed. But here it is. Here's my couch. It's a 1 in 7 drop and, uh, and I'm really proud of it. 
Now that Skeletron is defeated, we only have two things that we need to get from the dungeon. One is a Cobalt Shield, which I immediately found from the very first chest. Thank you very much, RNG. And then the second one is a Bewitching Table, which, like the summoning potions, will allow you to have an extra summon. It makes the difference. Now, we're coming up to the end of the run for this episode. So what we need to do is create a large flat area because we're about to do the Old Ones Army. Now, I did this at a different point in my original run and I would say not really worth the time. But what we're doing is we're getting the Ballista Staff. The Ballista Staff is crucial for the Wall of Flesh. You need it for that extra damage. And I think without it, it would be a really difficult fight. So for those that don't know, you can buy the Ballista Staff before you've done the Old One's Army, but to use it outside of the event, you do need to defeat it. Now, with the Fire Imp Staff and with the Whip, this is a, uh, it's an easy event. I'm not using any real buffs. I'm using Regen, a little bit of Swiftness, Iron Skin, but nothing more really. And honestly, with that, it was, uh, it was pretty easy. So, that's where we're going to round up today's episode. We're going to pick up with the Wall of Flesh in part two. So, I really hope you enjoyed part one. We're going to have part two pretty soon. I'm really glad that you guys were so patient with this one because I have been talking about it for some time. It's unfortunate that the cat deleted the footage, but how I saw it is, it was another chance to replay one of my favorite games. If you guys could give a like on today's video though, it would be greatly appreciated. We're pushing about 40 hours worth of work for this video, which is a lot more than I would usually do. So big shout out to Ridge for sponsoring today's episode and supporting my career. I really appreciate it. And with that, we're going to round things up. Guys, if you are new around here, maybe consider clicking the subscribe button. Here on Chippy Gaming, we talk Terraria. So if you like Terraria as well, you're going to fit right in. But that's about it. Guys, have a great day. Stay safe. Wash your hands. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.